standing out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 53.40 kilograms and is wearing the black trunks. He is currently undefeated in 18 professional fights with 13 of those wins coming by way of knockout. He is the former NABF champion and the former WBC Continental Americas champion from Cartagena, Colombia. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Yoni El Colombiano Perez. And now, introducing his opponent. He's fighting out of the red corner and wearing the leopard print. He weighed in at 53.06 kilograms, and he's had 24 professional fights with 22 wins and two losses, with 18 of those wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked number three by the IBF. He's ranked number seven by the WBC. And from Ring Magazine, he's ranked number four pound for pound in the world. He is the former two-time IBO bantamweight champion of the world from Springs in Helting. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the current IBO bantamweight champion of the world, Silence. African Spice, Mabuza! He's gonna have to offer angles. Stay on his chest when when it's when it's necessary, but make sure. Watch out, boy! Club in bees. Oh, big punches, Bella Perez. Where Mabuza walk on the other watching the echo. No Mabuza watching the echo. Someone up a card and guard. Mabuza. Misses badly with that one. Catches with that one on the mouth. And Perez comes back. Abuza likes to double up on the right hand. And I think uh, uh, probably could do with one at the moment. Because the second one has been missing. And when he misses with it, there's a counter left hook from Perez. So uh, looking to push the face. Look, he's not shy to mix. That's the one thing that the fight fans at ringside are definitely enjoying tonight. All right, big shot from Abuza. Abuza's just got to move his head on the way in there. He's throwing some really good punches. He's aware where he is, but Perez is the type of boxer who's going to wear you down, let you work, but wear you down. Pick pick those punches, pace himself. Well, Mabuza, silver medalist at the All Africa Games in 1999. In South Africa, has come to the end. Better punches coming from Perez in that particular round. Uh, I think that Mabuza probably needs to take a breather a little bit. Uh, go back to the strategy. Look at the things he was doing in round number one. Move a little bit. Use head movement on the way in. Look at that. Eating a straight right as well as a left hook there. Both those punches in one combination. Mabuza definitely needs to keep his eyes wide open. Be careful. Um, but uh, Perez definitely doing an incredible job in uh, round number two. He goes the distance again. He knows that's what he should be doing as we begin round number six. We're going for 12. You'll remember that this is a championship bout uh, because these guys are fighting for the right to fight for a world championship. And there's always a big punch coming from Perez. He never stands back. He knows he's got a fight on his hands. Mabuza too knows he's got a fight. This could be an opportunity of a lifetime. We've seen it's been slowed down considerably now, Mabuza, by Perez. I think he's taking a breather, Mshagazi. Uh, it's also good from time to time to, 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 to pick your moments in a fight uh, and, and not just be pushing throughout because the, the danger is that you may be caught. That's the end of the round. Mabuza on the inside, picking a right uppercut, but down. taking two uppercuts and then returning. So clearly then that exchange there 
Drawn. The silence, Mabuza. When you saw him throw two left hooks, he could have finished with the right uppercut, but it didn't. Uh, wow. Mabuza sees that there's an opportunity for that right uppercut. Look at that. Very, very look again, Mabuza looking for opportunities. But Mabuza missing with a lot of those punches. He needs to think rather than to try and force the pace. Look at that, big punches. Perez allows him to throw those punches to the body. But uh, this man, Perez, is hard not to get the threat. Mabuza chases him around the ring. Uh, Perez's movement in the ring. No, definitely, but I think... There you go. Just some highlights from the previous round. Round number nine. Mabuza really had to dig in very deep here. I mean, because although he's po forcing the pace, he's being countered with some crisp punches from uh, Yo Yoni Perez. So um, a tough fight indeed for the South African. This one. There you go, trying to mix them at close quarters. But... One from Mabuza. That's the first 10 seconds. <laughs> Mabuza should be clinching right now. Should, should be, be looking to, to clinch. clinch. Look big, big. to clinch. Look to clinch. It's Stogos him again. Oh, it's Stogos Mabuza again. What the ref is going to do? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's, it. That's the end of it. That's the end of it. What a colored fight from Mabuza. But what a way the fight has ended. With Yoni Perez, the stronger of the two. Standing turn of events here. Mabuza leading on points, I believe, probably by two points, and uh, unfortunately gets caught by a stiff jab, and it stops him. That was the end of this fight. Unfortunately, I mean, Mabuza, having done everything, thrown every punch he knows in the book, he used the right strategy, moved when he needed to. But unfortunately, gets stopped. Uh, let's take a look uh, at what happened in uh, this particular fight here. Bantamweight IPF Eliminator. This is round number one. Mabuza is all aware of where he should be. Starting the fight in the way that he should be. Now look at him throwing the short and crisp punches from the inside there. But at all times, Yoni Perez was counter-punching, throwing one or two and picking Mabuza from time to time. So uh, in the rounds that I said to you were pretty significant for Yoni Perez, those were the rounds where Yoni Perez decided to take the initiative. On the other hand, Mabuza also being guilty of being too wild in those particular rounds there. So all he had to do really at the end of round 12 was to come back and just take it home. Unfortunately, it was not going to be. So as the uh, fight officials are still working hard to make sure that they have the, uh, the final announcement and the final result, well, uh, well uh, we are going to go straight to the Duke for the final announcement because we will not be requiring the points. It ended in the distance. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Kenny Chevalier stops this bout one minute and six seconds into round number 12 to the winner by TKO and the new mandatory challenger for the IBF World Bantamweight title, Yoni El Colombiano.